Hi there, it's the middle of the night, and I don't know about you, but I thought it would be a good idea to record a little video about how to do component testing with Web.io. So let's check it out. All right, let's get started. As a little demo project here, I'm using the Vite plus React Hello World application, which has a little counter in the middle that adds by one if you click on the button. So we want to use Web.io to test this little component. For that, I've checked out the project locally and right here. And in order to add Web.io now to this project, all I need to do is call npm init web.io.latest. And what this does is it will start up a configuration with it that will guide me through the installation, which will contain a couple of steps to understand what type of testing you want to do. So first is it will detect the project that I'm in, and then it will ask what type of testing I want like to do. As you know, with Web.io, you can do end-to-end -end tests for web and mobile, where you can do component or unit tests in the browser. You can test desktop application using Electron or XUI test. You can also test your VS Code extension with Web.io. For this tutorial, we will pick component and unit testing in the browser. Next is it will ask you which framework you're using for your components. Here, Web.io comes as well with a variety of flavors. And for this tutorial, we're using React. Next question will be whether or not we want to use testing library. Testing library is a great framework that allows us to stage and clean up our components before and after every test. So this is a great way to you know, simplify our tests and even use some really smart selectors that they provide to help us find the right elements. We pick yes for that. Next is it's pretty standard. We test using Mocker. We want to keep using TypeScript uh, since our project was generated using TypeScript. We could generate some test files, but since I already have an application to test, I press just no here, but the test file can be useful for you to play around and fiddle around with the web driver test framework. Next is which report I want to use. I will keep the spec reporter as default and then skip all the rest question. And at the end, ask WebDriver to install all the necessary packages that are required. So after it, that install happened, the configuration wizard has created a WDIO config file for me that contains all the WebDriver configuration that I need to run browser tests using WebDriver. Some of the important configurations here are the browser runner that has React set as a preset. If we want to define our spec files in here, the location of these spec files. So we can do this by saying, okay, I want to look for all spec.ts X files. And so this will find all the TSX files that I have defined in my source directory, which will be my test. So we can, for this tutorial, we say, I want to write my tests in app.spec.tsx. Since I want to test this component here, I just define this test file with the same name. And then you can define a set of capabilities here. For now, we use Chrome, but once we push our test into CI/CD, we can add more browsers to ensure that our components work cross-browser. Now, in our first test, let's just verify that we actually run in the browser and not in Node.js. So for that, we add a little describe and it block, and we say our app should run tests in the browser. And in order to verify that, let's just do a console log that uses a web API that is only available within the browser. So we use window agent to have it print the user agent, you know, which is an API only available when I run within the browser. For visibility purposes, let's only log errors for now so we can see what web driver prints out. And all we need to do is now npm run WDAO because web driver has been adding a WDAO script right into your package JSON right here. So if we run this, we will have WebDriver setting up Chrome driver for you and it runs my task immediately. And you can see now that I've been running Chrome headless in the browser. But you know, we also want to see what happened in the browser. So for that, by default, WebDriver will have the Headless mode enabled, you can just comment that out by adding some slashes. 
and now whatever runs um, head full. And in order to not have the browser shut, shut down when the tests are finishing, we run Reptavo with the watch flag enabled. So let's just rerun the same command, and this time we add the watch flag. The watch flag will now open the browser and keeps the browser open. And what we now see is component testing using Reptavo in head full mode, which shows you usually the component, which we haven't imported yet, but the component will be displayed on the left. You have the test reporter in the middle, and you have the dev tools on the right. The dev tools are very useful because they allow you to use the WebDevO primitives in order to for you to find out which commands you need to use to interact with the component. So you can do things like browser.getTitle, and it uses WebDriver to get the title for you, or it will use WebDriver to find the elements that you want to interact with. That can be very useful in order for you to build and generate your tests. Now, we have nothing rendered yet. Let's render the component in the browser. For that, we go into our spec file and we import our app component from our app file. And in order to render the component into the browser, we will use the render method from the testing library framework, which will make it very easy for us. We just have to pass in the component and it would will render. Now, the testing library will also clean up the component after every test. So in order for us to be able to see the component, we have to debug the test by calling browser.debug, which will stop the test execution at this point. Let's import browser from WDIO globals and make it the function async wait. Now we press save and WebDriver automatically restarts, reboots the browser. And we now see our component right here. Now, obviously, as you can see, the CSS is a little bit different from our actual application. And we can just import the styles if we want, even though they really don't matter for our test. The component we want to test now is this little button in the middle. By clicking on it, the text of the component will be increased by one. Um, so we can now use the dev tools here in order to find out what we need to do to play around with that component. We can inspect the element and see that it is a simple button that has a count is one text in it. So in order to catch that element, we can just say, okay, I want to find by a CSS class called button, and I want to get the text of it. This is pure WebDAVO APIs. And here we get the count as one, which means we found the right selector, and we can now execute a click on it as well and see how the counter goes up. Let's have in our test two click commands and add an expect assertion to it as well. Now let's input the dollar sign to find the element. And now we see that WebDriver already counts up. We can now play around with our assertion. For that, we use the expect primitive. WebDriver ships with an expect function that allows you to use handy WebDriver supported measures. And so we can use the same selector and say to have text. And we call this count is two. This passes. If we would test an invalid value, you see that now there's like some retries going on and at the end it will fail. So this is the right assertion to be made at this point in time. You can now add this little snippet to our test um, and see that the tests are passing because we reached this debug statement. So let's just import it to have to get the right types. We move to the debug statement and we now have a working test. So from now on, we can now move to the next test, inspect the element, call the debug to have you know, play around with the current state of our test and, you know, start developing our component test, test by test. All right, that's it. That's component testing with Reptavo in a nutshell. I hope you enjoyed it. We will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.